you guys. Now, before we dive into our next game, we have, of course, the Twitter question we asked you. We have a couple of answers lined up, and I have Demon here shine a light on them as well. And uh, so we asked you which of the recent roster changes has had the greatest impact so far and why. And of course, the winning tweets you'll be hearing right now will get five Logitech G100S gaming mice. And the first winner tweet comes from Errol's, Errol's Owl. A really so? I don't know. A really so? Okay. Uh, I think the fact that Darker replaced Edward has brought out a more aggressive gameplay for Genja, which benefits the team. Yeah, actually, I kind of agree with that. Genja actually did tweet out after Edward went. It's like, you've got to treat your support a bit better. So maybe it's kind of jolted him, the fact that he played with Edward for effectively two years, and suddenly it's like, oh, I need to change the way I do something. And maybe the team will add a little word with him as well, because we noticed it, I think it was day two at DreamHack, suddenly it was like, oh, switched on aggression. Yeah. And the uh, second tweet is from Izoha, it says, definitely NIP, changing almost all members is not only a big change for the team, but also for the enemies. And, you know, they've gotten a lot of flack for changing up three members, but seem to be turning all around. Right. Yeah, that, this was what, definitely one of the big surprise changes, but it's worked so well. They're 3-0 already after the three changes, and they were big changes, but they were very good changes as well, because they were clever. They brought in players that were all playing together on Heimerdinger's class side, two players that played on Cursey U, long experience in tournaments, so they knew they'd were very well experienced. They weren't going to struggle under the pressure. So very good changes for ninjas in pajamas. Good eye from the management there. Uh, third tweet is from at Matthias MT. He says, the biggest roster change is definitely Fnatic. They had that roster for long, but this is optimal for when Reckles joins the LCS. And, you know, I asked it, uh, to the manager before, how, what of an influence does that have on the AD carry they just recruited? Is he just there for just a while? Or? Well, th this is something we talked about anyway. When N-Rated and Yellowstar were there, we're like, Reckless is around now. We knew he was there, he was a presence, he'd been at the studio a number of times. So like, what is going on here really? You know, this is a lot of pressure. A, it was from Yellowstar. Yellowstar's obviously wised up and thought, you know what? I'm probably going to get replaced here. I'm going to see if I can get the support role. And maybe that's why he turned it on. I still feel sorry for Enrated. I was really good friends with Enrated. And, you know, I'm sad to see him not here. But who can argue? They've gone 2 0 today. Could they have done that with Enrated in there? Maybe, maybe not. But how does Pushu deal with this? Because he's in here. He may get to the World Finals if they qualify, of course. Will Reckless suddenly replace him before they even get there? That's, that's harsh. That is hard. It needs a good mindset for that. And maybe we'll see and rate it back if he yeah. maybe gets spot on another team, of course. Then the next tweet is from at LOL Dreams. I think the change for alternate will be very impactful, like Gamut's change last week. The new change has, a, of core playmakers gone. And that is just so, uh, you see that so well here today that hmm. they, they can't play with one player. This Pharrell Lord in team alternate and just breaks up their entire synergy. Well, I mean, changing the mid lane is like probably one of the biggest changes you could do. It is only temporary, so let's not get carried away about this yeah. one. It's simply a case of Pharrell Lord couldn't be here this week for whatever reasons. The team obviously don't want to discard it to uh, give it out to the uh, information of the, of the people, but. It was only a sub change, but White Knight definitely looked like a fish out of water. Alex Itch absolutely manhandled in that mid lane. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't. And our last tweet is from Synergy Tech. It says, SK roster changes are the most game changing because there is none. And they have had <laughs> two great games since everyone changed, absolutely. But then today, not yeah. looking as good. But that was a very close game. Yeah. That, that could have gone either way, that match. For a period of time, it then, it, then SK suddenly slunk away. They missed off those two big ultis, and that was the big change. They, I think Ocelot simply mistimed his, his shockwave with the Zonya's Hourglass. If that would have landed, they would have melted that player. It would have been a very different result. So, yes, I am one to absolutely love the fact that they haven't changed anything, but you can't get around the fact that at the bottom of the table is Evil Geniuses and SK Gaming, who neither have made roster changes, and do they need to... I hope not. I hate to see players go, but so far we'll have to see. I mean, it's, it's week four now. We're only going to have a nine-week season. It is 28 matches still for these guys, but it's dangerous territory already. Absolutely. What has to be done has to be done. Well, congratulations to the winners. Of course, they will also be contacted via Twitter if they might have missed this. Thank you very much, D-Man. And now we're going to go over to Joe and Jason for our last match of the day. Thanks a lot, Shock. So let's get that final game underway. It is, of course, the Russians of Gambit taking on Meet Your Makers. Now, Gambit today, they played alternate, and I say play in the loosest of terms because they absolutely destroyed alternate today. Yes. I, I there's not much else to say besides that. Da uh, Diamond Fox on his Udir was fantastic. So strong, couldn't be touched pretty much. And then Alex yeah. just destroying White Knight with that rise. 
Again, Zed combo. Very strong team. Looks like they're back in form. And it looks like they're really gunning out. Like, they realized last week we lost two games to Spawn Techs, but we need to make something happen here. And they really did. Like, beating the number one team like that is yeah. wow. A little bit scary, I think, for everyone else. Let's have a look at the two teams then. Starting with the blue side. This time around will be Gambit with Darian back in fine form in this top lane. Diamond Prox in the jungle. Alex Hitch in the mid lane. And the bottom lane of Genja and Darker. Of course, in the red corner for Mutual Makers, we have Kuban in that top lane. Makati in the jungle. Charu middle. And, of course, Mackler and Libic. So you guys, of course, have been voting all day long for who you think is going to win today's games. And right now, it's a pretty big percentage for Gambit. Yes, 70% 70 of you think that Gambit will win this game. We've seen a lot of really big numbers where it's you know gone either way, but this one feels about right, to be honest. It, Gambit is just ridiculously strong. Yeah, certainly the way that they've been looking is definitely uh, a scary prospect for Meet Your Makers right now. And don't forget, guys, you can already vote for tomorrow's games. We have six of them coming your way tomorrow over on lolesports.com. Let's go over the final points of Gambit versus Meet Your Makers then. Gambit... Last week was a very troublesome week for them. They had that support, uh, that substitute in there. Uh, Spontex coming in for Darian, who was unfortunately ill. But when they've come in today, they look like, if not better, than the Gambit that won six games in a row before week three. I definitely have to agree with that. I mean, it was like it's completely different where their aggression was controlled. Like we talk about controlled chaos, but it wasn't even chaos. They were just in the right place at the right time every every single time. And yeah. of course Diamond just was not stopped in the jungle. And I actually questioned his Udir a little bit earlier when I was watching upstairs. I was like, I'm not really sold on that. But after that <laughs> game, I think everyone out there is really sold. And of course they beat Alternate before. They beat him today. They I think they're the only team that Alternate hasn't beaten just yet, unfortunately for them. But they're looking like like a revitalized team. I have to say, like we talked earlier about new uh, new people being brought into the team, like roster changes, how it can revitalize the team, how it can give you a little bit of extra energy. And with, with Darian back, it seems to be the same thing. Yeah, it seems to have worked for them, even though it was just a, a one week, a two game even uh, change for them that happened there with Spontex coming through. So meet your makers then, the team that they're up against here. They had that great start where they, you know, they went undefeated at DreamHack until they met the League Leaders alternate. But since then... They've been a little bit hit and miss. It seems to depend on their opponents a lot, uh, which you know makes sense if you if you really think about it deeply. <laughs> but it's about the play style that their opponents bring to them. Yeah, and I think uh, Meet You Makers has finally adapted. We've talked uh, for a couple weeks in a row about how they like control of the game. If they don't have control, they typically lose the game. But they've changed it up. Like we finally see them be aggressive. I know you and Demon were casting them back over two years ago, and they were very aggressive level one, very high use of pink wards. They finally did that um, earlier against Fnatic, but fortunately then it didn't really work out for them. But maybe that's what they needed. Maybe just adapt their strategies. That's what we all keep saying. Season three is all about adapting. Mm. Who can adapt from week to week to week? And Meet Your Makers, it seems like they've finally been able to do that, though they haven't really, oh, I don't know the word I'm looking for. They really haven't refined it just yet refined it. Uh, and that's something that they're obviously going to try and do here against Gambit. Whether or not Gambit have uh, taken their foot off the gas pedal here or not is something that we're going to be finding out in just a few moments. But for our final game of the day, we decided we're going to highlight two players who could be key to their side's victory with Gambit's Alex Itch and MYM's Charo, the mid laners for both of these teams. Yeah, both these players have really similar play styles, but they have different ways of going about it pretty much. Uh, both players have actually really really even stats as well, both around the 3.2 KDA, not to mention 45 kills, uh, which is really interesting. I'll get to that a little bit later, but as you know, Charu takes teleport on every single champion he plays. He likes to interact with other lanes because of this in the early to mid game, but not to mention late game. Because Meteor Makers is very aggressive with wards, he likes to teleport in behind a team or teleport to someone taking a blue buff. There's a game I'm talking to him specifically with that one and really try to shut them down. However, on Alex's side of things, he likes playing very mobile champions. He hardly ever takes teleport, but he likes to pick up kills uh, on those champions, like uh, really snowball champions like Kazakh, Zed, uh, or even Ryze technically can be snowball -y. And because of that, he interacts that way, and then he can either split push or just start some team fights because he'd be strong in either one of those. And very similar between the two players, but I just say in, in terms of you know stats, in terms of what we've seen so far, Alex has been a little bit more successful with it. Yeah, and that's it. if we look to his game earlier on against Alternate, picking that rise, dominating White Knight in terms of CS in that middle lane, then moving up to the top lane where he was split pushing hard and destroying everyone that came anywhere near him. We saw Kerp a couple of times with that Kale 
coming in, protecting himself, sticking the ultimate on him, and it still wasn't enough to actually keep him alive uh, against Alex, which is uh, rising that one. So we'll see if that actually comes out for him here again today. The funniest part was it's a rise. Like, the slowest tower pusher ever, since it's based on ability power, attack damage, has none of those pretty much. He, he, just like you said, could not be stopped, and that's his play style. He likes these champions that you cannot 1v1. You have to send more people against you, and also a little bit more team fight oriented, like his Kha'Zix, where he could jump around, constantly pick up a pentakill, which he eventually did do, and I'm curious how well how, how Darren's gonna actually keep playing because we've always highlighted him as being the player that overextends a little bit, typically dies, but because of that, because Gambit knows that's gonna happen, they usually are prepared to go for like a dragon or an objective or something like that. But it seems like he's actually in that week of being ill. He's kind of maybe refresh his interest in the game. He's playing a little bit differently, and I want to see if that continues. Well, of course, the interesting thing here as well is that Gambit are going to have, uh, they're on the blue side, so they get first bans, first picks. What are we thinking for this? Because we know that Darion himself, he he's quite versatile when it comes to his champion pool, and showed that a little bit more recently. Uh, the likes of, I think, Elise is going to be a, a big contest point in this game, the fact that Kubon plays that one a lot, the fact that Darion has shown time and time again that he's really good on it as well. Exactly, the least. That, that, that's it to me. Kuban kind of realized that everyone is letting him have it, and then he's doing extremely well, but then they're like, hey, we should take that away from him, force him on Zac, uh, somewhere where he's a little bit less comfortable. So I think he's actually, I think he's been practicing other champions, like his, like his Zac, maybe a couple of more in there, because he realized that's going to happen. But just like I said, Darren plays a very, really strong Elise top lane. Um, he plays pretty much any champion. Like, we've seen him even use Lissandra top lane before and, and do okay on it. But definitely something like that. And and what's funny to me is, Joe, and I know you're going to think this is a little bit funny too, but we have, like, two of the Udyr junglers in European LCS with Makade and with, with Diamond Prox. They both love that champion. Makade hasn't played him that often lately since it's been mostly, like, Shen and, and Nalus and stuff like that. But I think Udyr actually might be banned out. Uh, honestly, the way that Diamond played him earlier on today, the roar of that bear stance is... <laughs> putting fear into everybody at this stage of things. Uh, but we are going to be getting underway here in just a second into Champion Select, so we will figure out exactly who's going to be taking what away. Uh, and, you know, there's been a lot of Evelyn banned out towards Gambit. It looks like Meteor Makers are going to go for that here again, and a Draven taken out because they don't want Mackler on it again. Yeah, in that level one fight specifically, Mackler, he did so much damage early on to expect it on Orianna. Draven is just really hard to control early game. Obviously, late game is a little bit easier, so they're like, you know what? Genja doesn't really play it too often. We'll just take it away from you and go from there. So Ash actually drawing it back this time around as well. <laughs> Genja, of course, has played some great Ash games. Not won all of them. Only lost one of them, though. So, you know, not the, not the worst win-loss ratio, but he's shown that he'll quite happily freeze out lanes for a long period of time, build himself massive CS leads, and hit those arrows across the map. Yeah, that uh, oh, that arrow earlier on today just completely turned the game. It didn't even turn the game. It just gave him the whole game yeah. from cross range. I mean, he's always been very well known with his Ash. But just like we expected, Joe, at least being taken away. So we won't see Darren on it. We won't see Kuban on it. And that means, will Mutual Makers use their first, one of their first picks as a Zac? Because I don't believe Darren plays it too much. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one here. And before that, their final ban. I mean, you've got the likes of Shen, Twisted Fate still up and uh, available in this one. So I'd expect one of those two champions maybe to be hit from this one. Or Jace, of course, who's got a, a massive ban rate so far in the LCS. Yeah, they're basically in a situation of do we let a lot of OP, OPs through and get one of them? Which looks like Gambit will pick up uh, the Shen. So they have Twisted Fate available for Charu. They have Zac available for Kuban if he wants to go it. Uh, Makade can always go back to Nalz or something like that. So they're like, you know what? If we're going to give you an OP champion, we want at least one of them. Well, it looks like it will be that Shen locked in here for Gambit Gaming. So that's going to be most likely, I'd say, 99.9% .9 Darren. I don't expect Diamond to have that with him in the jungle. But what are Meet Your Makers going to go for here first? The, there's two AD carries out of the game, so they may look to try and restrict things there. Or they may just lock that Twisted Fate in without seemingly battling an eyelid. It's really scary to do that. I mean, oh, no. no. And I'm just thinking, like, Kuba won't play Twisted Fate. It'll probably be Charu, but... Just to lock it in so early, we've seen it countered so many times by Kasten being picked up. And then again, he gets in a 1v2 lane and Twist Fate will end up getting in a 1v2 lane on top of that. But I don't know. I mean, if anyone knows how to counter that Twist of Fate, it's going to be Alex. And with that Fizz, which we have seen him play once with his 30 0 0 masteries, he should be able to shut, Ku uh, not Kuban, sorry, Charu down. Well, the interesting thing here, Varus taken out. Ash and Draven both are banned here. So Varus is Genja's uh, most played champion right now, has four wins out of six with it. So that limits Genja already here with that Ash being gone as well. I mean, you'd expect that he's going to fall back when, when Varus, Ash, and, and Draven are out there. 
that it'd be a Caitlyn that ends up getting picked up here for Gambit. I actually wonder if it could potentially be Misfortune. Or a Cogmore even, something that we've that seen true. him go for in the past. That is, and he has a very protective team comp already. I don't I don't remember actually if he's played Caitlyn at all. Uh, I'm trying to cast my mind back and I really can't think of anything specifically that he's been doing that, but We'll see. Actually, it looks like he will be going for Ezreal here. So we're both or wrong. Ezreal. <laughs> yeah, Ezreal he has played once, lost that game with the Ezreal, though. So uh, deciding to go for that one here, we are going to be seeing the Thresh this time around for Darker. Was obviously uh, in the spring split a must pick if it was available for Gambit Gaming with Edward, uh, who's obviously no longer with us here in the European LCS, over with Curse in North America. Uh, but Darker's going to give that one a bash this time around. What are Meteor Makers going to go for you now, though? I think they're going to pick up Nautilus for Mikado. I mean, if it isn't Shen, he go, he always falls back to Nautilus. Um, he's a lot of CC as the game goes on. You see some pretty powerful early, uh, early on ganks. I think that champion and maybe Zac for Kuba on top lane. Because he's going to be against Shen. Like, he knows he's going to be against Shen. So it's actually not a bad matchup for him. So you see that Charu on your screen. There needs to be a lot of discussion going yeah. on here in the Meteor Maker's ranks, which tells me they've been mm. thrown off possibly a little bit by the bands that have come their way so far. There is the Nautilus for MYM, and it looks like it will be a Kennen added into that as well for Kubo. I, have we seen him play Kennen before? I don't I don't think we have. And it, like we were saying before in the pre-match that he's probably been practicing a lot more champions since at least always gets taken away from it. And this might have been uh, one of the champions that he's been doing it with. And you, know, you mentioned they're taking a long time, a lot of discussion. And to me, that says Mutri Makers have prepared for this game and they really want to win this. Like this is a, a pride thing for them. And <laughs> Busting out new champions, it, it really could happen. Well, let's see then. Final two picks here for Gambit. We're going to see what Alex is going to be running up against Charu's Twisted Fate in that middle lane. And they were hovering over Fizz earlier on, which we've seen Fizz versus Twisted Fate is a fun time for a Fizz. <laughs> yeah, for a Fizz. Uh, oh, wow. So he might actually go and more more global presence with a Karthus. But I'm thinking about Mutual Maker's side and Udyr. I'm not going to say it's not going to be picked, but most likely won't be picked just in terms of you're against a Varus ultimate. A not oh, come on. Against a Nautilus, but you're against so much CC, which in the game previously, he was not. So he was able to get in there. And most teams that run a lot of CC against um, Gambit, when they do run a new deer, just shut him down completely. So it's actually going to be a Zed that Alex H goes for. You know, the, the Zed Kha'Zix were both very, very strong in the spring split coming out for Alex H. And it looks like he's going to go for that Zed wow. to go up against Charu. And Lipic actually going in for the Fiddlestick. So Fiddlestick's becoming more and more popular as we go along. And let's not forget that Zyra was available to be picked in this one, something that Libic has gone for most of the time. And that's where he's had most success as well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is that you're going for a, like an AOE composition, but you go for Fiddlesticks against an Ezreal because the grass moves are really hard to hit on a Zyra against an Ezreal. So you're going to be able to fear him, silence him. He can't ar obviously arcane shift when that happens. It's all going to come down to Alex. Like if he can get his combo on Mackler without being feared, it's going to be very deadly. Mackler would just explode. Well, we're going to be finding out here. This, of course, is our final game of the day. Gambit versus Meet Your Makers. And Gambit looking to uh, regain that streak of wins that they had coming up until uh, up until last week, of course, where they lost both with that substitute Spontex in the top lane for them. But they certainly looked on form earlier on in the day when they took down alternate. I think 22 minutes it was in the end. I might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that's the fastest game we've seen so far. I think you're right, actually. I mean, that was just it was just so one-sided. You knew it was going to end that early. And I'm kind of thinking about how this game's going to go a little bit. And every time we see Kennen, I always try to mention that if you shut him down early, his ultimate's not really going to do anything throughout the game, unless it's obviously like 40, 50 minutes in like we had previously. But I think Diamond actually will be ganking that top lane relatively early on the Kuban. So you have the Shen taunt, so you're going to lock him down. And if, if Kuban gets shut down like we've seen before, Meech Maker seems to just peril from that, or going yeah. to peril from that. Yeah, they seem to have a few problems if that kind of thing comes along further down the line. But Gambit, now they're looking to catch up with Alternate. They could have the same amount of wins after this game, and that would be a big thing going into tomorrow's play. I mean, yeah, currently in second place after starting not that strong, but honestly, being tied with Alternate right now or having the same amount of uh, wins is definitely a big feat for them. And we'll see if they can continue the, this dominance throughout the rest of the, the spring split. Because remember, there's only a couple weeks, oh, not a couple weeks, but they're like halfway through the season already, and you have the World Finals at stake. First through six or get into the playoffs, obviously the higher position you are, the better chance you're going to have. And we'll see if they're able to do that. So here we go then, in-game with Gambit versus Meet Your Makers. Let's see how this one all goes off. Let's 
Talk a little bit first of all about level one, because we have been seeing quite a lot of action going down at level one uh, during these games. You can see that Diamond's like, I am not going bear stands first, guys. You can forget about that stun at level one. I'm straight into the tiger. Exactly. And I think Mutual Makers have a stronger team just in terms of having that fiddlesticks on Livic, having that silence where the entire team's grouped up against it, you're going to get shut down right away. So Mutual Makers, they rush straight into this bush. Genja was there, though. So they know it's going to happen, and they, know they can pretty much prevent this invade if they do put some wards down. As you see, Darren actually heading down from the top side, so it looks like they want to contest this. Certainly does. We see Genjo backing away. He knew that Meet You Make because we're coming into that tri bush. And we're now headed down towards Red Buff, and it looks like we are going to see an encounter from this one there. Was actually uh, Darker just showing himself there. Not quite able to uh, land that hook. And Meet You Make us back away from the Gambit jungle. They got that ward down here inside the death bush, so they saw Alexich actually coming down the, ri uh, down the river. Possibly in towards the side of them, and in the end, not going to be seeing anything here, it looks like, for level one. We're still very aggressive out of uh, out of Mutual Makers. I don't think they've actually been that aggressive until, uh, obviously, this week. So it shows they're trying to change things around, but we're going to have normal starts here. And actually, Diamond's going to be starting blue, so it looks like he'll be trying to get bottom off this. Unless he wants to go for a counter jungle, which against uh, a new or not a new, sorry, against uh, Nautilus, you easily can do. Easily can do that, Udia. Especially starting with Doran's blade and having a good, strong, uh, hard start from your teammates. They're really going to help him out with that one. But Meet Your Makers have actually come back into the Gambit jungle here. Funny thing is, after all that, Gambit didn't actually ward their red buff. And it's going to get stolen away. Actually, a good job by Meet Your Makers. They committed a pink ward, though, um, over towards the middle side of the map. And that means Libic only has a ghost ward and a green ward bottom. So, you be very susceptible to ganks. Actually, Gambit will know this is happening, though, because they have that ward there. And in the meantime, you did see Darker ward up the blue buff of Meteor Makers. And we're looking at Diamond Proxy. will be going across the jungle. He actually will be spotted, though, by that ward, I believe. Oh, Darker here, actually. He's going to get pushed onto by Makata. Charu is coming around the side. He's going to pull the Sun card, and Darker might fall foul to this. Actually, will be forced to burn his flash there and gets over into the red pit to stay safe. Diamond has, as we said, though, gone straight in for that red buff. Oh, Genja and Mac are going head to head here. Getting very low for both of them, but. That was actually a great flash coming out of Darker. They're able to escape, and Genja can arcane shift out of that. As he actually just hit level 2 as well, so he actually could have been pushed out if he wasn't able to escape that. But now Alexich getting ganked here already by Makati, who hasn't even picked up his blue, so he's actually going to be very far behind with Diamond counter jungling him. There is that Tiger going to work on the Wraith right now. They've got a ward on this blue buff right now. Diamond did already use his red, so not really a chance of him coming around to steal another buff from them. But Genja in this bottom lane, you heard him there just getting low from this one. His icon in the left-hand side is flashing right now, and he needs to be real careful there. The silence coming out from Libic, an awkward bounce from that could spell danger. Yeah, so, and that's what's so strong about Fiddle, is if you get the two champions there next to each other, it's going to do a lot of damage to them. But Darren pushed up Kuban towards the top, so they're going to go for a dive here. They are going to go for a two-man dive. Are they going to be able to get in on towards Kuban? Has actually left his turret flash back in. Taunt going to land. Diamond taking a lot of damage. Is he going to go back into this one? He's going very, very low from that. Won't actually die up until now, but Kuban doing a great job of holding that one down. I was, I was so close. I was wondering why he was running away from the uh, from the turret right there, but he got both of them committed under it and flashed back in, took the stun. But either way, Makati's going to be doing a little bit of counter jungling himself. And I don't think he's actually been towards the top side of his jungle, so he didn't know, well, obviously didn't know that went down, but it doesn't matter. In 3.8, the jungle camp spawn 10 seconds quicker, so not going to affect him too much. Not going to be too bad for him as we are going to see Alex here putting down good damage on towards Charu. Makata had come in just in case Alex decided to commit a little bit more to that fight, which you wouldn't expect really out of Zed at this kind of level. He's forced Charu away from the lane, which is going to be his big thing here. And actually has a 10 CS lead. Got that elixir on him as well. So he's looking for some big plays at the early levels. And the thing is, if Alex hits six quicker than Charu, he's going to blow him up. So this yeah. is not really good for Charu. He's going to teleport back, though. So don't miss out on too much CS here. And we did see actually Genji go back as well. Only picked up a couple of health pots. So that just shows the dominance that Mutual Makers already has. This diamond, he's, he's eyeing that big rate, but it's not there. Actually going around the side here, thanks to that vision, knew he could stay out of range. He's going to get the stun down onto Makata, and here we see that Doran's blade once again in action. Makata down to half HP without really anything being done. That Tiger Stance is just so strong right now, and I feel bad for everyone in solo queue because that's going to start coming out again, especially when the Spirit Guard Udyr does, uh, does get released. But he's actually looking towards his top side. He wants to make something happen. Like He realizes if he shuts Kennen down, they're going to do very well, and he's up there for the second time. And Makata is just recalling here. So this could be very, very interesting. 
Sharuk just puts himself a ward down to stay safe, but Diamond is still waiting down in the bottom lane though. Makla taking a lot of damage. Gendra actually going to get feared up here. This is going to be some good damage coming back across, but not got quite enough there. Double Doran's Blade from Makla means that he is going to be a threat, especially when he starts to proc those stacks of light. I'm looking at CS and I'm amazed to see that Genshin's ahead considering he got pressured so early on. Yeah. He got pushed out level two. He actually still has a lead. I don't know if that's a mistake out of MYM or if that's just Genshin's super farming at this point. Either way, Diamond still is sailing away another Wraith. And he's really trying to hold Makade back, which in terms of levels he's currently doing at 20 minutes in in their game earlier on today, he had a four level advantage over the enemy jungler. Yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff right now as Makata headed down towards bottom. Let's see if he can actually do anything there. There's a ward for his team, but nothing from Gambit. So they're not going to know that he's actually there right now. But can he make the impact? Can he get the hook, basically, is the question that we're going to answer. And there is the answer to it. He walks away <laughs> and decides, nope, not going to be able to get in for that. He's going back for a little bit. Actually, just going to go ward up a little bit here, just to show or see where Alex is going to go. Because we mentioned you know, in the heads up between him and Charu, he likes to roam around and pick up kills where Charu will either teleport in or just keep farming to where he'll split push later on. And they know if they can keep Alex behind a little bit, that's a huge chunk of their damage. But with the way Diamond's going, with, with the Tiger Stance, he hurts so bad. Right now, Kuban has forced this big wave of minions. Let's see how Darian's going to handle these underneath his turret. Which would be expecting that he's going to do a good job of. And uh, actually went back in there, taking damage from Kuban, though, whilst he goes. And Kuban's doing a good job of keeping that pressure down. He's got a ward in the top of the river he's there. For so, his ignite. Yeah, he's yeah, that Ignite is going to be coming up here, but is he going to go for it? It's still a risky play. He is level 6, though. He chunks a bit more damage from Darren. He wisely now is backing away completely. That would have been a kill for Kuban if he went in with that Ignite up. And now Darren's actually sticking around. As Diamond comes in, the flash top misses. Wow, Darian taking a lot of damage and will go down for this one. That's a massive miscalculation coming out of Gambit. And Diamond, I'm sure, is wondering what just happened there. His flash was available if he wanted to get in for that flash stun, but credit to Kubon, what a turnaround. And you see even Darren shaking his head right there like, oh, I messed that up so bad, but you don't want to get a cannon fed as Alex still pressuring Char right here. He's level seven, so we could see that all in come very soon here as Makate trying to come around. Makla getting very low. Makate's coming down though. Makate is coming down. He's going to come through as we are going to see Twisted Fate. He's now level six. He's going to get involved on this bottom lane. He's going to get a stun card onto Darker. Here comes Stan United, though, and they're going to try and turn this one around. Darian going in forward. There's Makata on the backside. He's out of position, but he's going to be able to catch Darker here. It's Makla that picks up the kill. Now Genji getting feared. He needs to be careful. They continue to turn around as they kill Makata off. And now Darian is not finished. He wants uh, a bit of revenge, I think we can call it, from that first blood going down. In the end, it will all end there, but another insane exchange in this bottom lane. The thing was, it was a trade of support for a jungler. So in the end, I think Gambit actually came out ahead in that, because you look at levels right now, Diamond, 5-4. to four. He's taking his own red here, so he, he pretty much controlled his own red. He's going to get his own blue, because obviously his Zed doesn't need it. And if he counter jungles Makade on that red buff again, he's going to hold him so far behind his Makade. Unfortunately, he misses that Varus ultimate. And the thing is, they're so hard to hit, but when you land them, they work out so well for you. That was, that was pretty close as well. I mean, Genja in the end, he was at max range, so he kind of spotted that one coming and just kind of sidestepped it in the end and said, nope, not today. A couple of wards going down on that bottom side of the map now from Meteor Makers. Want to make sure that they've got vision of Dragon. And that blue buff is going to be started off. It's Libic that will uh, kick that one off. Charu, of course, will be the man to actually take it here once that is uh, taking enough damage. He's got double Doran's ring right now, headed up towards that Seeker's arm guard here as well by the looks of things. Makler actually getting caught out in that bottom lane. Here comes the teleport though, and they're going to try and turn this one on its head. And there is a snipe coming through. Makler is still very low, but it's Charu that picks up the kill. Well, here comes the bear from the side. He's going to stun and kill Makler. And now they're going to go for Charu as well as the hook lands onto him. He's stunned. The box goes down. Stun card comes in on towards Diamond. Have they got the damage and speed to go through? There's a flash in. Charu is still alive. He gets thrashed down by Darker, though. And that will be a two for one. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Alexic going all in there to get the kill on Makata. I don't even know where to start for that. Wow. You had... <laughs> Just wow. You had, yeah, you had Charu ulti down there. Pick, help pick up the kill on a Darker. Then he teleports back down there. That's why he takes the teleport. It's Twisted Fate. You don't think you need that teleport, but it worked out, uh, worked out for them in the beginning. And obviously, uh, Dime was able to pick up some kills here. But just seriously, wow. And Alex being able to 1v1 Makade, who's now level 5 and Diamond's level 7. That just shows how Diamond, he's just around the map constantly. He's counter juggling like crazy. And the ganks that he does commit to usually end up in kills. Now you see those 
Switches of stance coming out. Diamond keeping up the damage there. That turret almost going down from that little push alone. And it's a scary little push as well. I'll, I'll give him that at least. Saw how strong Diamond was earlier on. He's 2 0 0 right now as well. So starting as he means to go and, and as he kind of left off in that last game earlier on against Alternate. If he keeps going at this rate, Diamond's going to be, be almost unkillable. Obviously, Magler, he has the ability to do to the true damage, percent true damage, but I mean, Diamond's going to be so fast. Mix it in with Darian, who is another tank for you. It's going to be very, very hard to eat through that tank line. Especially with Genja, who is doing, honestly, uh, pretty well considering his start. And then you have Alex, who already has that one kill, 92 CS, so he's ahead of Charu here. And to be honest, he can bully him out. If he wants to, he can just ult him and kill him. Kata maybe getting caught out. Darian in the top lane as well. He's going to be going low and probably going to get finished off here. There is the finisher from Kubon. Didn't really see how that one all went down in the start, but the damage was enough. And now they're pushing on to Darker in the bottom lane. He's locked up by the chain of corruption. Makla will finish him off. And that will be another one for Meet Your Makers. Really nicely done there. Two kills on opposite sides of the map. Gambit has to be so irritated with that, because that's the third time Char has been down there, and the third time he's been able to help pick up a kill. But in the meantime, Gambit respawn, they take the middle turret, and they're not showing signs of stopping just yet. No, they're going to keep pushing through on this one. Bottom turret may take a lot of damage from Meet Your Makers, but honestly, Makata has already seen what happens if he tries to challenge Alexic <laughs> earlier on, especially since he's got that death mark available to him. There is that turret in the bottom lane, down to below half HP by the time Genja is able to get rid of those creeps. He's gone for the tier here as well, as, he, as Genja does with every champion. Pretty Actually, much, yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. Even Boris will do it. Even Heimerdinger has AD. But Diamond, he came in again. He actually smiled the big wraith away. He still he has a oh, so he has a two-level advantage right now over Makade. And he's becoming a top of force as Alex going on Charu. Going in on Charu. That death mark going to pop here in a second. He's going to have the damage. Or is he? Charu is starting to walk away. Manages to dodge the shuriken coming out. And that will be the push back here. Alex H not quite got the finishing touch. He was literally on, well, almost nothing. Yeah, I, I, I pass it off like he's going to get the kill. There's nothing, nothing amazing they about that. But, that way, yeah, though. but Charu able to escape with the help of Mikado right there. Fantastic job. But Alex, he's level 10 right now because he's been sticking this lane constantly. As Darker going to get feared here. Take a little bit of damage, but he's just trying to zone as much as possible for Mitri Makers. Yeah, taking, as you said, the damage with that as well. Right now, it does have that sight stone in there, so getting a bit of health from that one. Always going to be uh, much appreciated, I think, with the fact that Fiddle can feed you straight in towards the AD carry. Speaking of the AD carries, 82 to 70 CS right now. Makla with that extra kill on as well. He's doing a good job of bossing the farm in this bottom lane. But on the other side, we know what happens to Genja. Once they lose that turret, if he's behind on CS, he'll freeze up the lane and he'll get right back in it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that... Macklin doesn't have a little bit more of a lead. Just, just because Char has been down there so often, you know, three times going for some ganks. But either way, he still has a lead. That's good. That's very good for them. Alex will be taking blue here. Some extra energy regen, not to mention cooldown reduction. And Char, who, as Seeker's Arm Guard, pretty much saved his life right there. I'm not sure he's going to do it a second time. That sound of Udia, honestly. If you think it's scary now, wait until the new skin comes out, because it's going to be haunting your dreams a lot more often, I think. Uh, this time around, going to be getting himself that red buff. A lot of pink wards down actually on the map around the dragon area. Two of them down for Gambit, although none of them actually directly on the dragon itself, funnily enough. Mikado, he's, he's sticking around for a gank, so all those pink wards, none of them being used to make a gank happen. As Diamond, he's already coming around as well, so we might actually see a fight go down here. I believe mid lane was actually being fought as Charu getting knocked very low already, and that was due to Alex's ultimate. So Gambit, in the meantime, going to go for dragon here. Diamond is all alone sent on top of a war from each of your makers here, but no one's really reacting. Mikaj is sticking around, but he won't be able to outsmite Diamond, who's level 9. Yeah, you you wouldn't imagine so. Let's put that disclaimer in there. Alex Hitch actually coming around the back now as well. So this is going to be a dragon for Gambit, but we are going to see the push going in. Charu is down on this bottom side. And then, yeah, is out, where is Alex? He's actually still doing the blue buff. He's not actually joining the party. Genja right now is focusing Libic at the backside. A little bit messy, but Libic is going to die. I think it was the Arcane Shift that finished it off there for Genja as he continued to push through. Here comes Alex. They get the kill on towards Makla, and they're not done just yet. The focus comes down towards Makata. Nice stun card. Will probably save his life from that one. Makata walks away. And right now, though, Gambit have that turret open for the taking. And the party was on Gambit's favorite right there as all five people just showed up almost out of nowhere on them. And they're picking up two kills with Kubon though. Still left alone. He has two kills, zero deaths. The nice CS advantage as well. So we 
talked about Kuban. If he can get a little bit fed, if he can get shut down, it'll be a good orb negative, obviously, for Mutual Makers. But right now, Mackler's the one being shut down quite a bit. As Alex have 2 0. We saw New Tech earlier on Zed, how strong a Zed can be and how it can one shot an AD carry like, like Yelpy pretty much felt that himself. And he's getting to that point where he can do that. So even if you have Kuban, who's really strong, Alex can one shot him if he doesn't get his zoners early on or just kill the AD carry outright. Well. And have a bit more of a quieter time now, I think, with those couple of turrets going down and the dragon already being taken. See how that all starts to work out. Emmett's lead is there, but it's a slim one. 2,000 gold at this point. This time, once again, edges over as Charu here is dead. Just in time for the splat. That's, that's a satisfying <laughs> sound. It really is. So, that, that, that just as we talked about, Alex being able to 1v1 anyone, he kills Charu outright. So, that's not a good sign. Not to mention, look at that CS. Holy crap, 163 to 107. That is a huge lead because Charo has been constantly leaving, and not to mention because he can't 1v1, but Kuman, he's coming around to go for a kill on Alex, who kind of almost gets away. Almost gets away, but not quite there. Shut down by Kuman. Hard to escape the stuns coming out from that one. It's Makla here, and Libby going to be going in towards Dark, who is going to get feared, get silenced as well. That's going to delay his escape, but... His escape came nonetheless. Now Darian's pushing this top lane, so I thought we might see a little bit of quiet here, but I was wrong about that one. And now Diamond's waiting off in the wings here to maybe get in on top of Kennen. Oh, they can die this pretty easily. Look at these two tanks, but Kuban, he's very quick. We're going to see if this is going to go down, though. And Diamond, he's still sticking around at this point, but he's not committed to anything just yet. Charu is already heading towards the top side of the map, as you can see on the minimap right now. Meteor Maker still pushing his turret down. Oh, Diamond, he's going to get sandwiched here, but with that spike takes with a big cold and walks away. No problem. Nice. This turret at the bottom lane actually is very low, and I think that's why Meteor Makers have been so persistent in pushing here. They want to get that one finished off. That'll put them in the lead in terms of turrets. I don't take that much, really, to finish that one off. As you see, the silence just darting around there, that dark wind causing them a few little issues, but not too much, especially not now as Alexic is coming around this side. He's going to be sniffing with that death mark available once again. And you now Fiddlesticks, Virus, it doesn't matter which one of them, they'll both die if Alex goes in. <laughs> yeah, it's so easily for him as well. I think it was, uh, Kari actually was invading the jungle of Gambit, but he's level 9. He's been able to keep up with Diamond a little bit there in terms of Diamond's only level 10, but with an Alex roaming around like that, he sh he he's very brave. Alex can go in on Charu again. This is going to be a big push for him. Is he going to be able to stay alive this time? No, he's not. There's that good old satisfying splat if you're a Gambit fan or player, I suppose. And Charu goes down again, and that's just going to allow even more free farm for Alex, not to mention the fact that he's up at 4 one zero. That Blade of the Ruin King already done. Now comes a bear down to this bottom lane. Let's see if Makla and Libic can get away. And in the end, Diamond decides not to go in under the turret. And look at Alex. He's pushed up that far with only one more towards the top side. That's because I believe Diamond put that down just to give him a little bit of vision. He's not really scared of anyone just yet. And Charu, he stopped building towards his own yet. He built a Sheen. He's trying to go for maybe his Lich Bane uh, as his next item. And you see Kuba on the top lane has his as well. But he almost has the money to finish it off into that zone, which he's... Well, as you can tell, obviously really going to need at this point. Yeah, without a doubt needs that one. Stop that damage coming down from Alex. We said it last season as well, the likes of Zed and Kha'Zix are just where he really feels at home. The outburst ability, the assassin champions, are really where he excels and proving that once again. And the thing is, I mean, they have such a wide champion pool, you yeah, can't ban him I, out. I say that, but at the same time, his win rate and his performances with the likes of Orianna, for example, a bit more of a, uh, a traditional AP carry, I guess we could say, is, is fantastic exactly. as well. So where do you go when it comes to bans for this man? I don't think you do. <laughs> you just try to hope that your mid laner doesn't feed him too many kills. But that's obviously what has been happening in this game. And he's he's still roaming around. And Makata, he doesn't have boots and mobility just yet, which I'm a little bit surprised to not see on him. Considering Nautilus, you want to get around the map really quickly, especially when you're against an Udyr who's really fast throughout the jungle. You need to keep up, keep up with him. But Kuban, he's heading down his bottom here. He realized that he needs to help his team out as Charlie's sitting top against Darien. I don't think that Darren will have too many problems with uh, dealing with Charu up there as we are going to see Makla. Deathmark comes in onto him there. It's going to do a decent little uh, bit of damage to him as we are going to see Kuban coming in from the side as well. He can't quite land the Shuriken in there. I mean, you make us, as I said it before, they really want this turret. I think they're going to get they're this just gonna, gonna, There we go. Just tank it up. Get rid of it. And I was actually looking at Genjo on the map. He was pushing middle, just ults the wave instead and backs away. I'm taking a look, top laners, even though Darien's died twice, 
he's still even in farm. Obviously, he doesn't have the three kills that he has, but Dragon will be up in about 15 seconds. We've seen the jungle, a little bit of a lead for, for Diamond. In the mid lane, still a 60 CS advantage for, for Alex and Genja, who who was ahead 10 early on, fell behind 20, is now even with his counterpart. Now even. Look at the items, Bloodthirst and that tier stacking up for Genja. On the other side, Blade of the Ruin King is going to be done for Makla. See what roles they're going to be playing this next fight. Darian going full on tank, uh, tanky here. Got that Warmogs already in there. And the uh, Merc Treads and that Doran Shield. Obviously more damage for uh, Kubon's side of things. He's close to having that Zonya's done. And when that happens, I wonder if Meteor Makers are going to try to go for some team fighting here because uh, Gambit has a very strong, uh, very tanky lineup with Thresh, with Udyr, and with Shen. But it's really hard to get in the back line against Genja, who has Arcane Shift and Flash to get away. But in the meantime, Dragon being started up here. They're staying on top of a ward. And they actually might be baiting Meteor Makers in for a fight. Well, it's down to half HP right now. Shen, of course, can get involved. Twisted Fate in the top lane. Can as well because he's got teleporters. We are going to see them going. Libby going to get popped down here as the box goes down. There is a chain of corruption and the damage is good here for me, you make, because they've already taken down Darker. There's the Fiddlesticks ultimate coming in. Alex it just died at the backside. Let's see if they can get on towards Diamond as well on the bottom side. Twisted Fate is there. He's going to try and finish off Genja. Not sure if he can actually win this fight right now. Maybe that Seeker's Arm Guard with the armor is going to be enough for him. A stun goes down. There is the fear as well. He's getting his life sucked away from him. Oh, and he's going to survive. Maybe they flashes away from the backside. Oh, here comes Destiny, and he is a dead man. Oh, Crazy. man, that was so close for him. And I guarantee when Libic was fearing him and signed to him, he's like, come on, let me have control of my character for one second, please. That's the rest of Meechamakers, though. We're going to push this middle turret, getting three kills, zero deaths. A little bit surprising considering how fed Alex was, but that exhaust coming out of Libic was so perfect. Not to mention the stun that came out of Kuban right after that. It just locked him down, and he just died. Yeah, that exhaust is, I think, going to be cru uh, crucial as well coming in. I mean, that's got to find its way onto Alex's head once they start to get into these team fights. Again, if you look at the gold, there's not really that much of a difference between them. If you look individually, Alex is 1,300 up, but you can expect that when he's you know, closing in towards 100, gold, uh, 100 CS difference here before long, if uh, Charo's not careful. AD carries, Makla still has the advantage there. He's got more kills, more assists, and the same amount of deaths as well. And he's currently 1,000 almost ahead of that one as well. So, you know, still really close stuff. And we've seen that these fights can still go either way. I think once these Zonyas actually get finished across the board for the for the Twisted Fate, uh, and obviously Ken already got his, I think it changes a little bit there. Yeah, and, and the thing is, if you look at where the kills are, they're both funneled really into two champions, one on each side, Alex and, and Kuban. So it's basically who can kill each other, who can kill the Alex first and who can kill Kuban first, because that'll pretty much determine if you're going to win the game when you have, you know, Ganja pretty much tied up with Mackler. So it just comes down to who can burst the other one first. And considering you have a Zonus on Kuban and he's actually chasing Alex down, it should be him. Yeah, we see him going in on towards Kuban here. Alex is going to be under all kinds of pressure here because that uh, Zonus was used, but Kuban didn't have the damage to finish things off himself. So a bit of an awkward trade in the end. <laughs> We do have Darker coming in. I'm not sure they can actually pick up this kill. Makati's waiting on the side, though, so he should be able to turn this around with that ultimate. Instead, no fight really goes down, and it looks like Darian and Char are getting to know each other pretty well as they keep constantly going head-to-head -head in lane. Alex is going to be backing away from that one. Kuban here just waiting and hoping that he might get a chance on something from that, but that won't present itself. That middle lane is pushed out there as well. Meet your makers got all three outer turrets down right now. And now they've started to get a few wards out. You can actually see a two-man team going through the bottom side of that Gambit jungle to get those wards in position. So they're trying to get that vision control that they so love to have. Oh, Darren, you might be in trouble here. Macklin and Libic are on the side to come in. Yeah, they are going to come in for this one. The stun card did come down from Charu. Darren's actually doing good damage here on towards him, but now that the rest of the team are there, that could be a little bit different as Destiny is going to get popped. Charu going to come in on that top side. The turret's hitting him here as well, and it's just a case of when this one gets finished. It's Mackler that gets him as he oh. flashes over the wall. Oh, so I was watching that minimap. I was like, come on, let's see if it happens, but... Darren, that's the tankiest member of their team. It took three members of Meech Makers yeah. to deal with them, and through that, Charo actually almost died himself. Diamond still counter jungling away, has 120 CS, so pretty good on his part. But the thing is, if Gambit keeps getting caught out like this, like Alex was topped uh, just previously, Darren now bottom, and Meech Makers are just slowly picking up kills and slowly starting to pick up an advantage. Yeah, and that Zonius now is a step closer, needless to large rod added in for Charu. 
I'm really interested to see how a big team fight goes once that is in there. And if Meet Your Makers will be feeling more confident with going for that one, as Alex again is looking for Kubon. And the funny thing is, they've got roughly the same health here. Uh, the problem is, who really gets the, the, the bounce on each other, I guess we can say, from that one. And the timing of the Zonyas, obviously, has got to be uh, bang on the mark. Makler is still pushing this bottom lane. Gambit going to try and come around here, but they need to be careful. They've got Mac uh, Makata and Libic both on the top side. In the end, they just walk around, and Makler says, right, then I better uh, get out of here as well. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit surprised how, how relatively slow this game is. I mean, considering when we saw them play a little bit earlier against Alternate, that was just fast-paced, constant action. But this game, it's just a little bit more calculated on their part. They're just taking their time here, not trying to, you know, throw away anything just yet. But Meteor Makers are doing a great job of... They weren't in control previously. We always talk, talk about uh, that, that fact for them. But they were able to kind of get back in the game, take the gold lead for the first time for themselves. And they still kept a little bit part of, of their old strategy in terms of being very aggressive with their wars. They have so many down right now. And you see Gambit's response to that with three or four of their own. So if Charu ever does teleport in, they're most likely going to be able to spot it. And then again, Charu has just pretty much been sitting at bottom lane right now, just trying to push it out, just trying to go head to head against Darien. Yeah, it does have that Zonius Hourglass now finished up. The Dragon is going to be coming up in less than a minute here as Kuban actually going a bit aggressive there onto Alex, but look at that. Diamond is in that brush on the top side. And that would certainly change the swing of any fight that were to happen in this top lane. Libic is waiting off to the side as well. He does have flash and he has that exhaust that we talked about earlier on, which could be vital for him. Charo actually are trying to stop Darien, but he's just not got the damage really to uh, to even try to kill him. He could try and force him away, but Darien's probably just going to keep coming back for more in true Shen style. His like, way of stopping him was he wasn't harassing him, it was killing the minions around yeah. him because the turret's going to do more than he'll do in the end. We do have a slight pause coming out though, and like I said before, a relatively slow game, but you know, in terms of how much CS has gone through, Alex 270 to the now 190 for Charu. So he's been actually able to free farm quite a bit bottom lane against uh, against Darien, but his turret was very low already at that point. It could go down really soon. So it looks like Darien's the one with a little bit of problems here. And obviously, we'll find out in a couple of a couple of seconds. Let you guys know what's happening. Yeah, we do have the admins in there behind Gambit. See if they can figure out exactly what the problem is right now with Darien. Yeah, uh, seems to be furiously alt tabbing out and in of his game there. So uh, hopefully that'll be fixing just a couple of moments right now. But it gives us a chance to look at where we are in this game. We're approaching the 30 minute mark. Uh, 30 minute mark. Gold is just 400 the difference at this point, which is. Pretty close, to say the least. 11, 18 kills. But as you said, Kubon on this cannon, 5-0-1 right now. He's a juicy target for uh, Gambit. And we've seen Alex trying to get that bonus away from him. And when he tried, he almost failed as well. So, I mean, Kubon, he's able to hold his own against uh, Alex. But for how much longer? Or for how much longer is Alex going to be able to survive against him? It just all comes down to who's going to get the, the items a little bit quicker. And who's going to have the summers available. I'm really trying to think, where's it really going to come down to? Like, what's the next big point for these fights to break out? And as we see Kubon heading down towards Dragon, it, that actually might be it. That may well just be it now. Spawned, of course, as Makata sits there with his anchor. Pink Ward goes down, revealing no vision. <laughs> Diamond just sidesteps the anchor there coming through. And Meaty Makers are going to be starting off the Dragon. Actually, Shen going home does have Stan United, so that's not too big of a deal on this front. Look how quick it's going down. I mean, with no one else in Gambit position, it's just going to be Diamond trying to steal it away as he does it. He heads over towards middle, and they wanted to go for a push on this turret to get it a little bit lower as it already was pushed uh, previously by those two, Alex and him. In the meantime, they just back away. They're like, all right, we're going to give that up. We're going to go back to farming up a little bit. But hopefully we'll get we'll get something to happen relatively soon because it's at that point where people have their core items. Is Diamond going to get caught here? Oh, he's going to get caught here, but are they going to be able to finish him off? He's pretty tanky. And actually, Charu coming in on towards Darker here at the back. The box goes down. That might stop them chasing through as Libic actually going to get slowed, I think, by the final wall there. Chain of Corruption will miss as well. And MYM have thrown so much at that one and in the end got nothing for it. Yeah, they couldn't catch the bear. I mean, he's just too fast. I mean, with that bear stance, and unfortunately, Meteor Maker is committing so much. Look at the, look at their ult taps. Three ultimates off of that. Libic got shut down by Darker's box. We saw Charu got obviously a stunt on a Darker, but he's just so tanky that he can't you know one shot him just yet. And then Makler, unfortunately, famous Chain of Corruption just skimming the, the backside of Diamond right there. So that might be the key for Gambit to actually go in, where they didn't even use Stand United. Keep that in mind. They didn't even have to use that to escape that. 
Right now, we are approaching 100. Oh, Libic, you're dead. Oh, Libic's going to get killed here. Uh, he's going to get splattered here in a second as Alexic will try and get away from this one. He's going to get hit by the depth charge. Are they going to be able to finish him off? He'll flash backwards. Kubon flash. Zonya's in there as well. Darian actually coming around the side here and look at the damage he's putting out on towards Kubon. He may pay the price for it with his life from this as well as he gets slowed and finished off by Makla. <laughs> Darker does a lantern a little bit too late. Wasn't in the right position, but they did say, well, I was about to say they saved Alex as he's actually going to die here instead. Yeah, really strong uh, dredge line coming out there from Makata. Alex may be staying a little bit too late with that one. That will be two kills in a row coming out for Meet Your Makers. Well, the gold is still staying even, but those those kills starting to be spread more around the team here. We see you know, one in there for Makata, his first of the game, now up to five for Makla. And that spread is looking really, really nice for them. And the problem is if Alex can't get kills onto more than su the support there. I mean, it is a big kill onto the support, don't get me wrong with that one, but they probably need more from it, as we are going to uh, see Darker getting locked up here. He's not going to escape. It's Charu that finishes off with a red card. Diamond coming in from around the side, but he needs to be a little bit careful of his own here. Actually, Blade of the Ruin King was used onto him. He gets uh, flashed, uh, stunned up here, and he's finished off by the wild cards of Charu. So we talked about it earlier, about the Udir pick, where we... Well, I, I know, it was, I think it was me specifically that said it, like, I don't really favor it. I, I don't know if you agree or not, but just because the amount of CC you're up against. Like, you're not going to move anywhere. And you saw right there at the end, he just got slowed by every. Oh, he got slowed by Nalus. He got stunned constantly by the gold cars. He got feared. He got silenced. He just could not run away. As we do see Zed going in. Going in on towards Makla this time around. Is he going to have the damage to finish him off? Makla will finally go down. It's Darian that picks up that kill as Alex tries to escape. Genja actually coming in from the side here as well. Alex will be finished off by Kubon. They turn around now and try to get over to the other side. Genja didn't really have what it took to stand and bang with Charu. That will be another kill picked up here for Meet Your Makers. They lost Makla though. And they're actually pinging out on Baron right now, though. Pretty sure they can't do it. Yeah, it looks like my just going to walk away instead. And I think this is probably the biggest gold lead we've had this game so far, but I know it's biggest for Meet Your Makers, as items are still coming in left and right for them. We see Alex actually heading for towards the GA with that chain vest. But he's still, I mean, he can, he wasn't able to fully burst down Mackler, obviously because he was CC'd a little bit, but if that's the person you're bursting down when you have Kubon this strong, I mean, that's not the target you need to kill. It has to be Kubon. And with that Zonis, he just can't. Yeah, that's the problem. It's a catch-22 that they need to kill him, but he can dodge all the damage from Alex's ultimate, which is a lot of damage. That goes yeah. without saying there. So it's a bit of a predicament here for Gambit to be in. Charo going to get himself that red buff. Uh, sorry, blue buff. Red buff never spawned there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking back to last week when Mitra Makers had uh, had Charu on tw uh, Twisted Fate, had Akade on Nautilus, where it was like 50 something minutes long. There was like three or four, bar three Barons taken from each of your makers. And we talked to Makade after, it, or Shox did in the interview. He said, it was at that point in the game where if one person gets caught, they get blown up right away. And I'm curious, are they going to let the game get onto that point where even with the Zonius, you probably can't survive if you get stunned and taunted? Diamond's going to get pulled in here. We'll get back to that in a second. Or now, because he's got away, because <laughs> he is, of course. Udia switches out to Bear and walks off from that. And yeah, that's what you got to wonder, because they're in. Right now, they're in a position where they got two Zonias, and they can completely negate that Zed damage onto, onto two of their big champions. There's a quick Silver Sash coming out there for Mackler as well, which is certainly going to help uh, in some respects as well when it comes to those team fights. So you got to wonder if now is the time for Meet Your Makers, and the longer it goes on, the, the worse it might get for them overall. And, and yeah, the thing is, like, Alex, so he can't kill Kubon, he can't kill Charu, but with the quick silver slash, he can't kill Makler himself anymore because you can cleanse off the ultimate. So it's pretty much he's be, his damage has become no, Like, he cannot kill anyone except the support and maybe Makati, actually, because he does have a last whisper, but in the end, that's not the person you need to kill. His time and doesn't care about Libic attacking him. No. That's coming to that point where, I mean, Alex had such a strong lead. But because Akubon, you know, pretty much gained his own lead himself and not being interfered, uh, interfered with by Alex, he was able to get the Zonias out quick enough. We see that Ezreal getting strong here as well. Last Whisper, Mura Mana now in on top of that Bloodthirster. On the other side, like you said, Quicksilver Sash, you know, that side isn't there. It's a big item overall as we are going to see Kubon getting engaged upon. But look at the damage he puts there on towards Alex. The death mark going to do absolutely nothing. And right now, Charu has teleported in. He's going to Destiny down onto the bottom side. Either way, it's going to be a dead Alex. It's Kubon that gets a kill. 7-0-2. 
talked about Kubon and you know, how Elise is going to be a big thing for him, but this time he's doing well with that Ezreal as well. Diamond right now on top of Libic. He's going to be focused down. Genji doing good amounts of damage. Chain of Corruption will actually start spreading through the team as Darien's taunt not quite landing, but they can't really turn around and do much to him. In the meantime, Charo with that Lich Twain, he's just split pushing. He's going to get his turret relatively low. I think it was Mitchie Bakers. They kind of wanted to go for Baron off of that kill, but then since they lost Libic, they backed off. But now he's able to get a free turn off of that. So they got one kill. They lost one person just to support, though, and a turn on top of that. Now Dragon's being pinged up. Yeah, Dragon being pinged. That's uh, spawned and available now for them. And three men going to go down there. That's not going to last long, especially Makata has that, uh, that smite there as well to be finishing that one off. We did see Charo actually walking away. It looked like Darren was going to try and come down to him. Didn't in the end. Here we go then. He's picked up there by Meteor Makers as they drag Dar uh, Diamond into this one. There are four men there though from Gambit, so they need to be careful here, Meteor Makers. Darian at the front line can't quite get in there to land a clutch tour and actually use the Shadow Dash to get away. Dark are going to be pinned down here though on that backside. Going to find it hard to get away from the likes of Nautilus, but does fire the box in there. Now it's Darian that gets the nook. True Shot Barrage comes over. Makla going very low and now Alex Hitch getting into the fight as well. Makata very low. Makla will die. Makata will die. There's the stun cards coming out of Charu, but they managed to follow in. It's a double kill coming down. Two men left up here for Meteor Makers. They're going to have to flash off as well. And Gambit with a great fight there that was... They, Meteor Makers kind of dripped into that fight one by one and made it easier for Gambit. And we always talk about with Gambit, if you give them a finger, they'll take your whole arm. That honestly might have been the mistake that Meteor Makers made or, or just a great plan of Gambit to pretty much turn the game around for them because they're going to get Baron off of this unless I believe Libic is the only one around the city to kind of steal it away. And with that, they should be able to push, should be able to get inhibitor to it because they have a tank enough front line that they can just sit there and siege turrets down. Well, Fiddlesticks, where they jump in Baron Pit would be a spectacular way to steal it, but he's not got his ultimate available anyway, <laughs> so that doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, Baron going over here towards Gambit, funnily enough, still behind in gold right now. Uh, although, you know, the turrets and that Twisted Fate passive, again, we talked about it earlier, are going to have a big say in things. Do you see much Genja, or so much Genja gold is sitting on? Gold is on Genja, 3,000. Either he's going to go GA, pretty much fall out by one, or he's going to just go for a little bit more damage on top of that. But I think he can afford to go for the damage. As we're going to see him actually pick up a Vanjie's Veil. So he doesn't want to get stunned up by Kuban. He doesn't want to get stunned by Char or even uh, Makati who can knock him up. It's, it's a really smart item. And now Alex is trying to push out this top lane. Pretty low is that turret right now. In the end, decides, I'm going to back away from this one. He's got a Zonya's chances of me killing. <laughs> ah. Gotta hate you when that happens. The stray wild card is coming through, and actually, looks like Alex is gonna go for the turret after all that, and now he goes in towards Charu, who is gonna use that Zonyas, and now all of a sudden, Alex finds himself in a little bit of danger. Charu going very low here from Darian at the backside. The stun card comes onto him, and he's now chasing in. Is he gonna be able to land the final shot? Charu is... Oh, <laughs> it dies to the Sunfire Cape in the end that got in range of him. Gets feared back towards their turret. But look how tanky he is, and there's a lantern over the wall. Dark are gonna bring him to safety. Now Gambit are gonna try and push through onto this Indian turret. And they have Charu down, so I mean, it's only up to Kuban to really defend it here, and they're just gonna face tank it. They don't have minions, they're actually a long ways away. But with the damage to take his out of them, they take that down, they're gonna take an inhibitor. And keep in mind, they had Baron. Yeah, they have it still. They still have Baron, yeah, that's gonna be regening them up there as see the silence. Gonna be knocking through Gambit, but they will be backing off from that one anyway. So, you know, death for Alex Hitch in that top lane. Committed to it there, did Meteor Makers. He didn't die. He what? didn't even die. Did he back away? Yeah, How they, they, let, they let him run away. Okay. So they, no deaths, got an inhibitor off of it. There you go then. Yeah, I, I know, I was, I was amazed that you were. I was like, watch, I was like, really? They're not gonna go for a kill on him? And ended up happening that way. So now he has a GA available. And they're so going to get a second inhibitor. Gets away and they get the inhibitor turret here. And it's going to be another one for them as we see him going on towards Libic. That death mark is going to finish off Libic as the true shot barrage from Genja comes in to maybe try and finish that one off. But they go now on towards Mackle. The hook lands onto Charu. In comes the box from Darker. Not quite got what it takes to finish off as Alex goes in to try to get the finisher. They do finish him off. It's Darker that gets that one. Alex is actually going to be uh, hit underneath the turret. Goes back, picks up the lantern, and once again will survive. Of course, he does have GA now to get himself, uh, or he wouldn't have died anyway because of that Guardian Angel, but either way, fantastic play out of Gambit once again. Just like that, they turn what was pretty much a stale game or a game for Mutual Makers where they easily could have, you know, won these team fights into two inhibitors for themselves.
Like, that is just ridiculous play out of Gambit, just for overall knowledge, knowing their limits, and making plays happen. And Meteor Makers, they have to be kicking themselves right now. Like, what do they do to kind of stop Gambit uh, Gambit now? And the thing is, Alex with the GA, it's it's pretty much like the same thing as Kuban or Chara getting a, a Zonia's. It's going to have a reset button for him. But the thing is, he's going to pop back up with full health, and the Zonia's only last so long. Yeah, that's a big problem that they might have with this one. We see Spirit Vis uh, Visage added in there for Udia. There's two Runic Bulwarks on their side at this point. See, that Negatron Cloak and the Zeal sat there for Darien, who we've already seen is pretty much unkillable at this time anyway. I mean, the GA might not even be needed by him. <laughs> I think actually with the Baron buff still on them for quite a long time, they might actually go for the finisher or at least take the third inhibitor because they're all heading up towards that top side of the map and awarding everything up here. And Meteor Makers, they're going to have to go for an engage. They need to push the lanes out as far as possible. But with Gambit Prince knocking out your front door on the top side, they, they can't really afford to do that either more or anymore. Well, Diamond. Smashing through. Dark are going to be clearing out the wards that were just put into position there by Meet Your Makers. And Darien's there at the front. And talking about tanky front lines, he doesn't get much tankier than this Shen and that Udia as well. As we are going to see Destiny pop, they pulled Diamond in for this one, but it could work out badly for them. Charu actually is going to get initiated on by Alex Itchy, who's right at the back. Shen going to be coming in for that shield up as well. As Darien gets feared. And then Shadow dashes away from that one. They've taken the inner turret while all that was going on. Again, capitalizing exactly. on every little thing that happens here, Gambit. Three, four members chase down Alex. He ends up getting away with the help of the Shen ultimate. Take a turret right off the back of it. So, I mean, Gambit, they should have a decent amount of money to spend. Wow, Genja, when does he not have over 2,000 gold to spend when he backs away? He's sitting on 2,500. You even have uh, Darian with 1,200. So he's going to be going for, it looks like, that Triforce, which he typically likes to go. And they're just taking everything away from the jungle now as they back out. Gonna buy up. Gonna probably actually wait for this next Baron. I would. I don't know. Gambit's typically not the team that would wait for another Baron to finish the game out. But we'll see if that's actually gonna happen. Well, they're at least gonna be taking this dragon. Every bit of uh, gold extra that they can have. Is Alex gonna get feared in here? On towards Libic. Where's he gonna go? In on towards Charu. There's the exhaust coming down. That's gonna hinder him a little bit, but he's got that GA. He's gonna be coming back up here in just a second. There's the lantern, and he manages to get back, and there's the rest of Gambit. Makata now the one in trouble. Libic gonna dive over into the rest of the team. There is Kubon as well. He's putting down good damage. Uses the Zonyas. Can they actually lock him up afterwards? Darker here. Gonna get spread to by that chain of corruption to lock him down. Darien is finally going low, but still survives as Charu comes in there with those home guards on the teleport onto that pink ward. Genja fancies his chances here in a 1v1. And in the end, that last that's just a one for one. And it's not over just yet. Charu gonna be using that Zonya's hourglass, and he is gonna go down. Darien does die in the end. Crazy stuff, Joe. I mean, that was all started with Alex diving in really far towards the top side and he pretty much knew his team was there the the, the lancer coming out darker was just fantastic unfortunately he would end up going back in anyways onto kuban while his ulti and end up dying but still two inhibitors down baron will be up in about 40 seconds here and i mean genja he's actually has a relatively long death timer but they're going to be here for baron and be able to pick it up really really quickly unless Meacher makers tries to go for it well we are 42 and a half minutes into this game right now and it's 2019 in kills to MYM. There's two and a half thousand gold that separates the two teams. That's not a big lead right now for Gambit. It is a little bit skewed. We said it earlier because of that twisted fate and what have you. But the fact is that if one thing goes wrong here for Gambit with these spawn timers, they might have a bit of trouble on their hands. They definitely might. And we actually have Kubon pick up a Leandri's Torment. So. It's gonna have a little bit more damage. It helps. It, it really helps against tanky targets like like Darian, like Diamond. So they'll be able to do a little bit more to them. But Baron is available. They do have an Oracle on a Darker. And the thing is, I, like I said before, I don't know if they're gonna go for a second Baron to finish the game or they're just gonna finish it. And well, the way they're setting up, they're not gonna go for the Baron. They're just gonna go for the push to win. Blue buff just been taken and away there by Alexich. Said the announcer. That inhibitor is going to be coming up here in just a few moments. So NYM will finally have that stream of super minions in the mid and bottom lane stopped, which may give them a bit of respite. Or it may not, because Gambit might just come straight back in there and finish off those two open inhibitors again. Look where Alex is currently standing. He's waiting for pretty much Char to come for his own blue buff here, but it's not going to happen. 
He's letting that one pretty much just go away, and he wanted to pick up that one kill. The one kill, all they needed to pretty much have a five on four and to be able to finish this game out. Still, you see, actually, wow. Hmm. Double Black Cleaver's picked up for Gambit. So Alex, he's given not only the armor shred to himself, he's given it over to Genja, and they do stack on top of each other, so it's going to be very, very dangerous. Do you see Twist Fate Ultimate coming in? Not really going anywhere, just to kind of get some vision. Yeah, just to get the vision of where Gambit are, what Gambit are doing with that Baron back in play. But the wards have been taken away right now, so with that Destiny down, it actually hinders Meteor Makers at this point, as we are going to see Makata face check straight in on top of them. Not really the target they want to go for, though, as Libic is going to get pulled in there by the hook. The True Shot Barrage comes across. Libic not going to escape. Darker gets that kill, and that's going to open the floodgates here for Gambit. That's going to at least be both inhibitors, and actually might be the game. I'm not sure if they're going to go for that third top turret at the top side of the map, but... As I, as I say that, Alex is going up there and split pushing himself, and Libic, I mean, he wasn't offering too much in these fights, but he obviously wasn't doing nothing because the fear and the silence is Darren already getting very low here. Let's be very careful. Alex still coming in from the side. He's trying to go straight for Mackler or even Char here, but Future Makers, they need to just hold on as long as possible. Presence of Alex Hitch alone there has won them that inhibitor. Meteor Makers didn't want to get involved in it as a stun card comes out. Alex Hitch already pretty far away from things. The minions were bearing down onto that inhibitor turret as well. They almost lost that, but crucially, they've held it here, which still means that not all three are down, and that's when, you know, it just becomes almost impossible to hold with those super minions coming through. Baron, though, is going to be the target here for Gambit. Can't see what Meat Makers can do to stop that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you have two inhibitors down, so you have the two floodgates of the super minions coming in, but can you stop a barren up Gambit when you've already had a hard enough time to pretty much be in them without it? That will be all five members, most importantly for them, that have it. They're going to back out, going to buy up a little bit and go for that last push. It's daring 3,000 gold he's sitting on. So that Triforce is definitely going to be done. Also, 1,000 gold on the rest of the members of Gambit. So if they weren't strong enough before, they're even stronger now. And it comes down to, can, Ma can, can Meet Your Makers really just control them? Can hold them down, pick up the kills where they need to? And with Alex, which is GA coming up in a couple of seconds, I, I don't think they have it. If you look down, there's, a, there's an Aegis now on Darker as well. So two Runic Bulwarks <laughs> and an Aegis. They've got Locket of the Iron Solari here, of course, done for Darker as well. Money coming out of their ears at this point, Gambit. Can they finish off? Kuban and Libic here trying to stop Gambit from getting in onto that final turret outside of the Nexus. But with Darian there at the front, not sure they're going to be able to do that. We already seen how much damage he can put down. That's before that Trinity Force was actually finished for him. So he's not just a beastly tank. He can put down a lot of good damage as well once he gets in there. Yes, he can, and that's what's really scary for, for pretty much Mackler, is he can't be in a position for this to happen as Diamond's gonna get pulled in, so is Darian. They're just sitting there as a front line. Diamond actually gets relatively low. Yeah, good damage coming out there onto the UD. Darian himself is down to half, which means that the two tanky members are not in the healthiest position. Of course, they can just wait it out a little bit here with that Baron buff running on for them to get that regen up, but Diamond, uh, Gambit are really struggling to get those last couple of hits onto that final inhibitor turret. And you Alex see, Itch yeah, is pushing them. Exactly, so he's keeping the ways pushed up. He's forcing Sword Meat Breakers to back away, and from that, Gambit should be able to take that last turret down and take the inhibitor as well. And just like I said, the presence of Alex is just scaring away Meteor Makers as Charo doesn't even want to get relatively close to him. And even with that good chunk of damage they did to Gambit, look at their health now. Pretty much almost fully healed up because of that Baron buff. And now Meteor Makers has to do that all over again. So here we go, gonna get in on towards the turret, finished off here. Are they gonna go for the fight now? They go in towards Makata, Alex Hitch has gone in on towards Libic. He's gonna not quite get away, True Shot Barrage caught him in the end. Kubot is right on top of Genja, he pops his Zonya's Hourglass, he's gonna go down from that one. They've killed off Nautilus, it's now all on Charu. Alex Hitch looking like he wants to try and get a kill at the end, gonna get his GA popped and Charu is gonna fight head to head here with Genja, right on top of the fountain, gets a stun card in there, the shield keeping him alive, but the next the turrets have gone down. There was the kill in the end as the hook actually lands. And Gambit, after 48 minutes, going to take down, meet your makers, and go 2-0 to zero here today. Complete reversal of what we saw from them last weekend. This one took them a little bit longer than the alternate game earlier on. But it was a similar story, I think. All, I mean, even though it was 25-20, to 20, a lot of those kills that... Gambit gave away, they probably didn't need to. And, and the weird thing is that Meteor Makers was winning the game for about 30 minutes in, or 35 minutes in, but one little misstep in a fight ended up causing them two inhibitors and a Baron. And we talked about Meteor Makers switch up their strategy, worked out relatively uh, well for them early on, but they weren't able to take that advantage that they built up with Kuban on Kennen and pretty much just drive it home.
meet you, Mika. It's going to be disappointing. That's two losses in one day. They spent a lot of time earlier on. I saw them in the uh, players' area here discussing what they went wrong for them, what went right for them even in that game earlier on today to bring it here towards Gambit. And, you know, they pushed, they pushed Gambit all the way here. The fact is that Gambit against Alternate looked a different class completely. And Meaty Makers went a good step to actually, you know, stopping that happening here against them again. But a loss is a loss at the end of the day. And I believe, yeah, that means Gambit will now be tied with Alternate in terms of wins, tied at eight apiece. But obviously they have that one more, or I should, yeah, one more extra loss against them. So yeah. we're going to see if maybe Gambit uh, tomorrow or even next week can actually take that first place away. And honestly, this kind of shows the quality of teams that Meet Your Makers, who has been I don't want to say it too dramatically, but on a downward spiral the last couple of weeks, they pretty much almost beat Gambit in that game. Like you said, took him to the brink, ended up obviously losing the game, but still for, for a team to come in to the summer split and be able to challenge Gambit like that, that's, that's saying something. Yeah, that's saying a lot in my opinion. I mean, Meet Your Makers sat in that third position before this one. They're now tied uh, with Fnatic technically on six for six. So uh, I'm just trying to think where that will actually put them here. I think they're dr they're one one on game. So actually, it doesn't. They're, they're kind of tied in the position anyway. Whichever way you put them, I suppose Fnatic get it through alphabetical order <laughs> or something like that. I'm not actually sure how it how it makes a difference. You know, one they're actually tied on the win-loss ratio, and they're tied up against in the head-to-head -head results. Uh, I'm just going to go with alphabetical order because it makes Sounds no good. sense to me yeah, at this does. point. Uh, but yeah, really strong win, a strong first day here for Gambit. We'll see, though, if they can uh, do that one here again tomorrow. We'll, of course, be back with another six games for you tomorrow. But first, we're going to hand over to Shox, who's sitting with Darker. Thank you very much. I'm joined here by Darker. Congratulations on that victory. Um, Guide us through the game from your perspective. Not an easy matchup, and especially Kuban, really tough in the early game. Yeah, my M played uh, really great. They uh, made us like struggle in the early game. Like after we took second dragon, they did a nice comeback uh, because they like were, they were fighting really well against us. Like Zaru and TF and like Varus were really strong. Like when Varus got his. Um, Blade of the Rune King plus Infinity Edge, his damage was like really high and in team fights they were really shining against us but like since we picked uh, our like comfortable team comp like I think not many people expected to pick Thresh like from me but uh, like we picked our comfortable team comp and like we feel really great in team fights with such a setup so we are glad that we won this game, it was really hard for us Yeah um... You picked Thresh, and on the opposite side, they had Fiddlestick support that's getting a real resurgence here. What are your thoughts on him as being a support as well? Well, uh, I discussed that uh, matchup game before with Missy because he was playing Fiddlestick support against Thresh in their previous game. And like we decided that if Fiddlesticks don't get hooked, uh, it's okay because he, he can fear, he can uh, his E to silence like and to bounce between AD carry and support. So he can deal a lot of damage and like save his full HP. But once you can land a good hook, and I did some in that game, like Fido gonna die really fast. And especially in late game, it can be a really hard time because like once one member dies late game, even if his team like has a numeric advantage, like, um, things are going to be bad because, like, 4v5 in late game, you don't want this to happen. Yeah, and it was bad for Meet Your Makers. Final question. You know, you've been in Gambit for a while now. How is the synergy now with Genja? Now they have practiced together for a long while, played tons of games together. Well, it's uh, going good. I would say we are, like, working together a lot. We're playing, like, every day, like, eight hours or something like that. And we are, like, understanding each other more and more, especially I understand him because like he is very smart and strong but like very special player. I think not many people can play with them actually in their team because like for example if Genja wants you to control that bash, if you don't go there and don't face check, he gonna face check himself and gonna die there for this bash just to show you like how you're gonna act and how you need to act as a support. So like he's a hard person I would say but I like it, like it's interesting experience to deal with him and like I really enjoy my time in Gambit. And it is going very well. Thank you very much, Darker. Now time to check in with Joe and Jason one last time to guide us through all the action that happened today.
Thanks a lot, Sharkson. What a glorious day it was. Six games. We saw some fast ones. Gambit versus Alternate, of course, 22 minutes. And we saw some very long ones in the end. Uh, in fact, I think the last three games were all particularly long ones here today. And that just shows you that you know, because the standings right now are so very close, that no team wants to make that, that fatal error of going a little bit too aggressive in a position where you probably quite shouldn't. Yeah, that's a really good point, is that since the Saints are just that close, like we had a five-way tie for fourth place, any win or any loss can really set you a, really set you apart. I mean, we have it's SK and EG over towards the bottom side, pretty much out of playoff contention at this point. But still, we still have six more games. We have I believe, five more weeks. There's a lot of time for teams to get back in this and really kind of show their true colors, I'll say. Well, we can have a look down the results of today and guide you through uh, how they all went down by the end of it. Of course, six games we had, starting off with Fnatic taking down Meet Your Makers with their new roster. Gambit then destroying alternate 22-minute game, that one. And then Evil Geniuses losing another one here to the Lemon Dogs. Against Lemon Dogs, when it was actually a very fast-paced game, about 20-something minutes in, very one-sided game as well, but NIP taking the win over SK, that was actually a very long game, a very close game for the entirety of that. And Fnatic did take the win over Lemon Dogs, going 2-0 now in this first day with their new roster. And of course, just as you saw, Gamut took the win over Meteor Makers. Yeah, fantastic first day of week four. Of course, we are back tomorrow with all of that. Let's have a look at the standings, though, and how it leaves us here after day one. Alternates still are up there at the top of the lead, uh, top of the league <laughs> with an eight to three. Of course, that could all change tomorrow, depending on the results. Gambit hot on their heels with eight wins, four losses. Fnatic meet your makers, both tied at six for six. Ninjas in pajamas got a game in hand, I guess we can say, over Fnatic and MYM of a chance to level things up there. And then we have Lemon Dogs on five for seven. SK and EG didn't think I was going to be saying that after uh, three weeks and one day. I guess we are technically. Uh, they're rooted to the bottom at this point. Four wins, seven losses. I, I just look at it and I'm just really amazed and at the same time excited to see what the next five weeks have to, have to come for us because... yeah. I mean, you're looking at teams who could possibly win the World Finals right now. I mean, you could have alternate go all the way, win World Finals. That's Cinderella story for them when they, you know, obviously didn't qualify spring, got into summer, and anything can really happen. Yeah, yeah. that is really true. So don't make, uh, don't make. Huh. Let's try that one again. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We'll be starting a little bit earlier on. Shocks will tell you all about that in just a moment. Uh, but don't forget, if you've missed anything, you can find all the VODs over at lolesports.com as well as the standings and the statistics. That'll be it from us here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Been a long day for us and the players. We're going to head over to Shocks for some final thoughts. Thank you very much, guys. Of course, six great games down today, and we especially remember the Spring Champions Fnatic coming back and going 2-0 with their roster change. NIP racking up another win, just like Gambit. But tomorrow, we'll be back with another six game here in the European LCS. We'll be starting off at 4 p.m. Central Europe.